Farnell Newton. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Roy. What is happening? Nothing much, man. You know, music. Music makes the world go. Well, they say people makes the world go round, but music makes the world go round. <laughs> music make the pe- makes the people go around. Yeah, <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> man. Man, uh, I feel like let's let's just dive into your story. Tell me what how how you came into to to be where you're at to to owning your own agency and to doing your own thing. You've been making music for a while and. As you said, like music is your everything. So I'd love to know where it started. But before that, before you tell your story, I want to know about one thing you are super grateful for. Oh, just I'm I'm just always grateful for uh, my community of, you know, friends, family, uh, musicians. And because um, a lot of my musicians are family. So very grateful for them all because as I always say, no one wants to hear solo trumpet. And the only there's two times you hear solo trumpet. In the morning in American military for Reveille, you know, boop, 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 and yeah. for taps when you're getting put in the ground. So mm-hmm. I'm very appreciative of my band and musicians and family. Yeah. Definitely, Definitely. middle ground there. Yes. Uh, you need to feel what so yeah let's let's get into your story man tell me all I about mean, it and my sync story or just like music i'm just man, trying what what brought you here like tell me, oh, tell yeah. me how you became farnell newton i want to i want to know know how that happened bro yeah i mean i've just always had a passion for music uh originally from miami florida but i think i really got serious when I got the jazz bug and Philadelphia. I went to uh, high school for performing arts, creative and performing arts, Kappa. And that's where a lot of people um, like Boyz II Men went, um, Bilal, uh, Christian McBride, Joey DeFrancesco, all of these great, The Roots, um, hip hop group and everything. And from there, that's when I kind of like really was like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do music for the rest of my life. And um, and just in Philadelphia, the young people really like ran the scene. We played on the streets. We played in the clubs. Um, I didn't know you had to be 21 to be in clubs because we were, I was 16 years old, hanging out in the clubs, playing music in Philadelphia. And just very thankful to have that experience, you know. Um, but you know, I, I you know I did the whole conservatory route. You know, did music school, went to Oberlin, Ohio, and studied jazz and also classical music. But um, I came out to Portland, Oregon, and I've been out here ever since, playing everything from hip hop, jazz, salsa, funk music, and um, and I went to get my university degree for masters at Portland State University. And I think that was a very pivotal moment that really connected me more with the local scene, but also with key people that got me into sync today. One of my former students, uh, Eric Norby worked at Marmoset Music. And at the time I didn't know what Marmoset Music was. I didn't know about I didn't know you could license your music on TV and have it on commercials and make money, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And then come to find out some good friends of mine had a song on ESPN like every hour. And I said, how do you do this? And they said, well, you go to Marmoset Music. So I went to Marmoset, ran into my old student, Eric Norby, and he really was thankful that I had him for a teacher and he said I always spoke nice to him and, and and made sure, you know, he was okay in the class. And so he got me in as an artist back in 2013 at Marmoset Music. And then um, shortly after that, I started touring with Jill Scott, uh, uh, three-time Grammy singer, actress, and Bootsy Collins, who's like, you know, the, the, the funk master, you know, Top Hat, Star Glasses, Funk Music, Parliament Funkadelic, James Brown. And uh, so I toured with them for about three years, off and on around the world, literally. And I stopped touring because I had a, a, a deaf in the family. And 
I was like, what am I going to do? Am I going to go back and teach at the university? Am I going to do other things? And I reached out one more time to my student, Eric Norby, who recommended me give him my resume. And he gave it to Marmoset. And I came in for a couple of interviews. And then I became the 40-year-old intern <laughs> at Marmoset Music. And that was 2017. And ever since then, I've been working off and on um, for the last six years at Marmoset, working in the a and department, marketing um, as a composer, um, and kind of doing everything that I can to help other people get into sync licensing here in Portland, Oregon. And also, you know, musicians from around the world. We sign musicians from everywhere. And, uh, and it just really shows that we're all connected through our love and passion of music. Um, so, you know, Marmoset music plays a big part of my sync, you know, journey. But then the last two years, I started a company called Formation Sound with my good friend Hunter Love. And we basically create custom music for places like Marmoset. Um, we, we work with Cozy Music in L.A., Complete Tracks in Vancouver, Washington. Uh, we work with Red Bull and BMG and Dodge a Bullet and... Uh, in the UK. And, uh, and this is only our second year being around our first year. We won a Mark award at the production music conference, um, for hip hop song of the year with Rashid, uh, Jamal. So, you know, it's like we, I've been doing this for a while, but as a business on my own, I've been doing it for a very short time and we've been seeing great wins and great collaborations across the board with artists from around the world. Mm. And that's right, like what that's what I do now. Like right now, I'm all about like helping people, you know, how to not not really a mentor, but just helping people. Like I, I don't want to, you know, I don't I'm not the type of person to, you know, I'm not no knock on anyone that does this, but I'm not selling courses. I'm not, you know, I just want to help people really get into this space yeah. because it's not taught in the universities. Um and a lot of times you can't find out about it because there's a lot of gatekeeping in this industry as well. And so, you know, I just want to help people and like really inspire them and, and point them in the right direction, you know, because if they don't know anything about sync music, I'm like, OK, go check out my buddy Clint Music or go check out uh, uh, XJ Will or just go check out these different people and mm -hmm. um, learn from them. And then when you're ready to take that next step, come back to me and then I can help you go further and where you want to go. So, yeah. So really, everything I do right now is out of live performance music or working for Marmoset and A&R department or making music for sync. So and that's that's my whole day. I get to do mm. that for my day job and mm. I get to do it for my side hustle. So I love it. You know. Wow. So I hear a lot of things um, from that, which I, it's, it humbles me when people like you who have Jill, have ha, have toured with people like Jill Scott, you know, um, go from, you know, from from being a rock star to being an intern. Yeah. Hey, that that takes something. Like I, I'm not I'm not gonna lie. Like I. In in my current mindset, if I was in your position, I would probably do. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. So, what did it take for you to kind of uh, uh, get into that humble mindset of okay, I'm not a rock star anymore. Now I'm I, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna learn this. I'm just gonna gonna go back to the drawing board, um, and do this. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's definitely a humbling experience because. I was there to learn. I was really, I said, and I told my wife, <laughs> you know, because because when I joined Jill Scott Band, I told my wife, I said, hey, in six months, if my career is not going forward and up, we need to sit down and have a conversation. But, you know, I mean, my career was going fine. Everything was going well forward and up. But when I stopped, I wanted to really, like, really learn what it was to to, to be in this industry. So you got to humble yourself. You kind of not let your ego 
you know, take over and just be a team player and, and be helpful. And, and, and I'm that type of person. I'm like, Hey, what do we need to get done? Like, what do we, what can I do to help? <coughs> Excuse me. Like, what can I do to help, you know, in this process and also learn? And because of that, one of my good friends, Graham Barton, who also goes by um, Sync Beast, um, I've been working with him and recording with him for the last six years at Marmoset and just learning so much from him because he's kind of like one of those guys you could just tell him like, hey, we need this for Toyota or we need this for Pepsi or we need this rock song for a film. And he's like, OK, I'll be back. And he'll go and play like all the parts and 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 call me for horns because he doesn't play horns. But, you know, just learning a lot from from him and others at my job and, and learning about this industry really helped me get a leg up and position myself nicely. You know, yeah, I'm the intern. I had a paid internship. I wasn't making the the greatest of money, but now it's like over the years, you know, if I've secured myself as, you know, good paying salary and also, you know, I get I do well in sync because I I pay attention to the trends. I'm listening, I'm learning. I'm really paying attention to what companies want and looking for. Mm. So but really, but really just really being humble. Like, dude, you got to come out of like, I mean, I just spent traveling the world and, and I'm back in this place being the oldest, one of the oldest people in the room yeah. <laughs> who's probably got more experience than all of them. But the thing about it is that, you know, I was able to learn and, and really contribute to the success of Marmoset for the last six years. So, okay. So let's say I'm on a rampage. Let's say I've, I've, I was on a rampage for like a year, like scoring a bunch of stuff and getting that, that strip money, um, doing all that, getting all that, uh, um, all these placements and really feel uh, like I'm, I'm, I'm on the up and up and then suddenly things stop. What would you, uh, what advice would you give a person who is going through that kind of thingy? I mean, yeah, it's sometimes you have to, I feel like even in the music scene, it's like that. You got to like step back and, and see what your strengths are and see what you really do well. And, but also, you know, find out other ways you could get into other spaces or create more music, collaborating. Um, um, you might work a project that's not as much money as you typically do, but it will put you your name and your music into different places and spaces. You know, it's just like when musicians like, there's no more clubs around to play and we can't play. No, you, you don't need a jazz club to play jazz music. You could you, go to the bar, go to the, go to the uh, uh, a restaurant, go somewhere else, make yourself known and available to what you do to other people. So, you know, with, with, and specifically, I'm just give you a great example. Recently, I put out a call, uh, APB, like a, like a. I needed like composers. I needed cinematic, epic trailer, fantasy. I vocals. I needed music. And literally, I got 100 emails in two days. Wow! And these are from composers who's written music on shows like Star Trek and toured around the world with like. Selena Gomez and all kind of other different places. But the thing about it is you, you can't be, you know, you got to let your, can't let your ego stop you from still being creative, mm. adapting to what's happening and finding a new path because you never know those collaborating and working with other people can open yourself up to a whole different uh, uh, industry, part of the industry. Cause there's so many different levels to like being a composer, writing for TV and film and also being in the sync game, you know, you got people who deal with production companies. You got people like myself who deals in the ad world, um, business branding and such. So it's like there's so many different levels and it's like, you know, never know, you know, putting that ego to side, being humble and collaborating could really like take your career somewhere else. Mm, yeah. Got to got to check your ego. Yeah. This world. And that's that's what I. uh I feel like I was talking to uh, to Trevor from GID, and um, and he was saying like you know you you have to the most talented people the most amazing uh, musicians out there are usually 
not making a lot of of uh, of dough because because of that because of that entitlement and i'm sure that you know it from jazz we i think we talked about it briefly on on ig and i told you man i'm i'm fucking entitled you know like i i feel sometimes like i'm entitled um and that's something i have to daily it's a daily thing where i have to keep it in check and say hey i'm not better than anyone i may be in a higher level at something um but that's only that's only my my unique selling point it doesn't mean that i'm by any means above anyone and that's what Mm -hmm. i love and i hear about what you're saying is that you know like there's there's uh, um Yes, there is levels of success that you can reach that you can reach at any time, but you have to go back to that uh, um, that equilibrium, which goes up in time naturally. I mean, mm-hmm. now you have five kids; you need to uh, uh, you need to provide <laughs> for them, right? Like you need to make uh, x more uh, five x more than if you have one, just like mm-hmm. simple math. Um, yes. and and I feel like it's it's a very similar thing where. A composer uh, success looks like a different thing as we develop but being able to go back from that high point of yeah i got a trailer placement or i got an, a big ad campaign to all right back to the drawing board let's see what what's what's next and i i, I love it i feel like there's a theme in your life where you've you've developed this resiliency and this uh, uh, uh thick skin and probably like also being in Philly has helped that because like Philly is very, oh, yeah. like, it's like that. So where do you yeah. think you, if we go back, where do you think you've developed that? I mean, I think it's from all of my upbringings because growing up in Miami, you know, I, I lived in, I lived in the projects. I lived in a no low income ne- neighborhood with people living in, and housing and subsidized housing and government um, funded housings and things like that. So, you know, I never had like a a silver spoon and had to work for it. You know, if I wanted a certain thing, no matter if it was, I was 13 or 14, wanting a pair of Jordans, I would have to go and earn money. How do I earn money? What, what, what What needs to get done? Do I need to rake yards? Do I need to cut yards? Do I need to sweep? Do I need to clean? Like, what can I do to help, you know, to get what I want? And, and so I've always been that type of person. Like, like I want to, I, I need something. I want something. I'm going to put in the time. I'm going to put in the work and get it done. But I've been smarter about it now because of like, I I'm, I don't know if I would say serial networker, but I love people. I love to be around people. I love the network. So when social media was really like becoming big, I just saw it as an extension of what I love to do anyway. So social media wise, you know, uh, I've connected with people around the world. So now I'm like, hey, how can I work hard to get what I want? But also who's in my network and in my circle that might have a little bit more access in me that could help me get to that next level. Mm. So, and, and another great thing about it, I started this social media group nine years ago called Jam of the Week, where you just post up a video of yourself playing a jazz standard um, and you post it up to the group. You know, it, it connected people from around the world who probably couldn't go to clubs or, uh, but could all contribute and make music together. You know, so now that group nine years later has 70,000 members literally from around the world. And I will go to a jazz club anywhere around the world and people will be like, hey, you look that, like that guy from Jam of the Week. Or I was at a, a jazz education um, conference, Jen, and uh, a, a student big band from Israel came in. And the guys, the young guys come in and they're like, Bangles, bobbles, and beads. They're like, because they that was the jam of the week. They were letting me know they know all about jam of the week. And just because of the social media connecting us because of our love of music and our love of, 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 of jazz, we all connected no matter the language barrier or not. So, you know, just I, I just feel like networking and really working hard has really like gotten me to the level that I'm at. And also just being cool. Like, you know, getting to know people, hanging out and stuff, having a good time. Those are very important and lets people know who you are, even in the stressful moments or in the in the happy moments. Yeah. Woo. 
Yeah, that's that's something yeah. I want I want I want the, the audience to to sink in, run run it back, like run back five minutes back and re-listen to this. Um, wow, that hit hard. Um, you you were speaking to mentorship. You were saying like you were kind of uh, holding yourself back to saying like that you're a mentor to people, but you know I feel like the biggest the biggest way of of creating value for people is, is, you know, like having someone pulling you up and then pulling somebody up. That's, that's how I feel like that's how tribes are, right? Like there's always like the, the elder and then there's the, 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 the youngsters, the teenagers, the warriors, you know, there's, there's kind of this hierarchy and, you know, and, and sometimes like the elders, like their, their mentor may be God, you know, like there, there, mm-hmm. there's a lot of ways to look at mentorship. And I feel like, um, having that mindset that you were speaking to as like yeah like look for knowledge and look how look for uh, uh solution solutions practical solutions of how to get things done um and also you know like not being afraid to to reach out to somebody because there's always people who would love to to actually help you out and and you never know you never know you know what i mean like you it's never not, it's know. not like and, and I feel like it's not like an approach of, yeah, put me on or something like that. It's not no. like that. It's just like an approach of, hey, like, uh, um, I love what you do. You know, like being really being relatable is is not talking about yourself to somebody. If you approach somebody, you don't tell them, hey, man, I have glasses. Right. Like you don't it, <laughs> it, it doesn't work like that. You, you're going to come to them. You're going to perhaps give them uh, talk to them about their amazing platform like you were speaking to about your platform that has 70 yo I'm, I'm a part of this uh, i'm part of this platform i love it you know like and then you're creating you're starting to create a conversation uh-huh. and then farnell can ask you oh you're a member cool how long have you been a member you know like it, there's but the thing that i feel like a lot of people are doing these days because of social media and because of uh, how fast paced things are going um, like the let's collab generation is, mm-hmm. is just like, it's, it's coming in without, with zero value and expecting yeah. somebody to, um, to reciprocate. Mm-hmm. Um, would you be able to speak to that? <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely get those messages a lot, you know, where it's just like, yo, let's collab. And I'm like, Collab what? Like, what? who are you? What do you do? What, like, you know, I don't know who you are. I don't, are you a rapper? Are you a singer? Are you a producer? What do you do? Instead of just being like, hey, my name is Farnell Newton. I'm a trumpet player, producer in Portland, Oregon, who has, and, and I try to find things that's relatable to people and, and, and the connections. Because once you have, like you said, instead of just saying, hey, we have cool glasses, but what's the connections? Like, how can we, how can we fast track this getting to know each other and collabing um, so that we can actually get to a place where we make some good music? And finding people on that, like, personal person, like, Finding the things at the core that really connects us, like locks us in faster. And I'm like, oh, you live in Atlanta or you live this. I've played with this person in Atlanta who I saw on your social media, but I'm not saying I saw on your social media. But once I mention their name, they're like, oh, you know, so-and-so. And so so I'm, I'm looking for the fast track. How can we connect quicker? Um, but as far as collabing, I feel like, I feel like my producing for sync really has gone through the stratosphere because I have amazing collaborators and amazing people who I could call upon who can do things I can't do and and who I also learn from with collaborating like I have um and that's how my business formation sound started me and Hunter Love was just collaborating. He was sending me some songs and say, "Hey, can you play trumpet on these songs?" And I was like, "Hey, yeah, I could play trumpet." He's a, he's a new guy, young guy, straight straight out of college. Let me help the young guy out. And then over time, I start seeing his work ethic and and like seeing what he could do, and saw that he was like actually able to finish songs without me having to tell him to finish songs. And and so like 
And then next thing, no, I was like, hey, let's start a business. You know, let's let's do this thing because we saw each other's strengths. He helped me where I was weak at. I helped him where he was weak at. And so, like, you know, recently another great collaborator I've been working with is Jay Josephine, who's a, a, a rapper from Detroit and who's amazing, like ferocious, like witty, humorous, and does a great job with collaborating, but also the way they give you back the files and and everything is organized they they you could tell they paid attention to this industry and such so i could hit her up for a collab and she would just knock it out boom and have it back to me already mixed vocal uh lyrics uh pro everything and it's like hey what do you need next farnell Let me know if I can help you with anything. And I'm like, I'm the same way. I'm like, hey, well, let me know if you need some horns on another song. And and that's how we're just basically scratching each other's back, collaborating, working and showing that, you know, like how how can I contribute to to what you're doing right now? Hey, my name is Farnell Newton. I saw you, you know, producing hip hop cinematic music and I'm a trumpet player and I would really love to, I've worked with these people. I worked with Shia Loom. I worked with um, Easy McCoy. I worked with Reed Steffen, you know, the illest Muppet in the game, the realest Muppet in the game. So, but it's like how I'm a great trumpet player. I think what I can do can help you level your thing out, make myself useful. and, 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 And you're like, cool. Well, let's try this. Let me send you a track with some horns and and let's see how it goes. And if I do my job correctly and playing my horns and instruments and sending files back to you correctly and having all the information, you're like, whoa, let's do this more often. You know, so it's just making yourself useful, bringing value to the whole situation instead of another person who just sees that you're in a place that they want to be at. And just wants to kind of use you or use your energy, like bring some value to it. What can you do to help me achieve or or can help in whatever I'm doing in sync music instead of just being like, yo, let's collab. You know, and then when I go to your social media page or Instagram, there's selfies or <laughs> there's there's no music. There's no there's nothing that connects me to what you do. Yeah. You know word yes man like well everything you're saying it's like uh, you're it's 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 um it's bringing a lot of it's bringing a lot and i i've been actually like in the past third like third um 20 minutes i've had this question written but i haven't even gotten to it because what you're saying (laughs) is so uh so in in the pocket to me um and yeah i mean there's something that I'm I'm interested in because like I have I have people who by the way I'm I'm actually doing just what you're saying like I'm I'm reaching out even through this this podcast I'm reaching out to people and saying hey like who wants to like there's an album I'm doing for this who wants to mm-hmm. who wants to who wants to come on and I, and, and I've started uh, using this even sync gems as my you know like as my little haven for for people because then like they get put on and different labels different agencies different stuff and then i get more stuff done and everybody's scratching everybody's back kind of thing um but i would love your opinion about you know like slow responsors uh you know and people who (laughs) take uh way more time what's your take on that is that like uh, are you just when you get let's say uh, successful people who who you want to work with, but they take a long time to answer. Or, or do you see that as an indicator of yeah, maybe maybe uh, I need to back back out of this? Or do you see it as a long term thing? What do you see it as? I mean, one thing you gotta see I, because I love people so much. I try to I try to really understand them and have empathy for whatever they do in life or. I, I try not to like prejudge them and saying, man, they haven't gotten back to me, man. They probably don't like this anymore. They probably don't like my mix. They didn't like my horns. Like I'm trying not to like, like really internalize all of those things. I'm like, hey, guess what? They might be busy. They might have a family. They might have a day job mm-hmm. or they might have other things happening. But when I 
collaborate with people, I try to make sure I have everything in order. Like I'm, I try to make sure my tracks are really good. Uh, uh, if, if not finished, it's very close. I try to have all the information. Um, so there's no like commun- miscommunication on what we're trying to do. And, and also, I'm also good about just tapping in with people saying, hey, like, yo, Roy, man, uh, I hope everything's good, man. I saw you posted about your dad or, or or you posted about you're working on this thing. I know you're busy, uh, but I'm not calling you about that. I'm just saying, what's up? Hope everything is good. A lot of times, you know, people would just hit you back and just say, yeah, man, I'm going through some things right now, but I still got that track of yours. I didn't forget about you. I've just been super busy. Um, I'm going to work on it tonight. Because sometimes I'm I, I'm the type of person I tell people do not feel bad about checking in on me, like yeah. because I forget I get off of my desk I got my kids I got barking dogs I got my wife I might have a gig I might have a rehearsal mm. I might just had a really hard search day at work and need to like compress. So sometimes it's not personal. It's just the fact that I have a lot going on in my own life. And I tell people like, Hey, just tap me, tap me. And and Mm. a a gentle reminder, just saying, yo, Farnell, but that's the thing about it too. We can't be afraid to follow up and say, Hey, like I, I just had something like that happen where I hit an artist up and I was like, hey, did you see those two tracks that I sent you? And they were like, no, I didn't. And I was like, oh, shoot, I thought you saw it. Let me let me send you the, the, the tracks. And they were like, hey, I downloaded them. I got them. And I was for me, I was like, did they are they ignoring me? Like you, you don't want to internalize that, you know, have the doubts and things, because once you have that, you know, then it, then you start like doubting what you're doing and your work and your process and such. But I usually just try to take a lot of deep breaths. I'll talk about it. Like I'll call Hunter up and I said, man, Hunter, so-and-so hasn't hit us back in a while, man. What, man okay. Well, I'll, I'm just going to send a little message real quick, just saying what's up. Uh, and sometimes a lot of times that kicks right back off the, yeah. the, the subject, you know, instead of being like, I've had people, cause I work, I do a lot of lo-fi hip hop collaborating and I get some of these young guys I work with, and they're like, yo, man, you didn't even record the song I sent you and such. And I was like, yo, I forgot. I haven't heard from you in a while. I, I totally spaced out. My bad. But don't like, you know, some some of them be like, that's messed up. You didn't like my song and you didn't do that. And I'm just like, like, yo, like, I'm busy. Like, yeah. I like the song. I want to work. Let, let me get 30 minutes. And let me go and pull out my horn and let me knock it out for you, you know. But some people come back all upset and angry. And then I'm like, well, I don't I don't even know if I want to do it now. You know, mm. I, I'm just trying to like, you know, like, dude, I got a day job. I got kids. I got older kids. I got bills. You know, I'm like, Psh, I'm busy. Mm. Plus, I'm getting yeah. old. <laughs> no. <laughs> it doesn't sound like you're getting old, my man. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're getting younger by the year. Yeah. You got like 20 gigs on your plate. You were yeah. just playing what, for just that. Because, it, you know, hanging out with the young people, I feel like keeps me inspired as well. You know, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Dude, that's that's huge. Like being able to to go about things like that. That's why, I'm, I mean, like I'm all about, really about uh, – um, you know the the um, as you said the soul's purpose but also like working on your mental like i've i've been working since 18 like i've i've been a junkie of just like reading books and understanding like my psychology and how things work inside me and that's why a lot of the things that i do here that's why i do them that's why i take the the more holistic approach because i know that if you don't sort your shit out like your personal shit like your daddy mommy issues shit um, with yourself and you're gonna you're then you're gonna feel triggered every time somebody doesn't do something for you that you thought that they should do you know but they fucking have five children like what what yeah. like and 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 you know like and and or and or like they're using their stuff to do other things they're 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 they have a workshop they're leading or they have a podcast they're recording or they have so many things 
or, or, um, and like what I've been again grappling with is you know like there's the book The Four Agreement and uh, Agreements by uh, uh, Don Miguel Ruiz. It's a beautiful book. Uh, I read it also when I was 17, 18. And and one of the agreements in the in the four agreements is don't take anything personal, um, and that is just you know spot on. He, of course, he gets in in the detail with that, but being able to work on your mental and have somebody who's a homie, who's a who's a friend, where you can have venting sessions with. That's why I'm that's why I'm doing what I do. You know, like I want to get people together to speak speak their heart, speak their truth, speak their shit. Let it mm -hmm. out in that safe container, and then come out as a, a, per, a, a way more compassionate person. Because you know, once even when, when you speak things to a, to a homie, to somebody who you can speak vulnerably to, things start to come into place, right? Like you, you you're like, oh, Farnell didn't lay. Man, I'm I'm feeling so upset. I hit Farnell like two times. He didn't he didn't uh, he didn't lay these trumpets. Uh, I'm so upset about it, and then you're like, "But he has five children, and he's yeah. busy, <laughs> and he he's heading a V and R in a in a, in a spot." And I just saw they got a big placement, so he probably needed to sign some contracts and get that right, you know. So like, once the this mind dump, and it's also verbal, you know, like you speak. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's why they say, "Speak your truth, speak your shit, talk your shit." It's because mm -hmm. sometimes speaking is what helps internalize things mm -hmm. because you hear your voice you hear your voice coming out um and that's right for me i mean i hear my voice when when it when it's and i feel like it's 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 the truth for a lot of people so i love what you're saying like you're you're, you're going back to the drawing board every time you feel like triggered like that with somebody who's not getting back at you and you're getting back to the drawing board and coming from the other side with compassion Uh -huh. which is fucking huge like yeah. it's it's huge it's huge it's huge it's huge and i i can't i i can't say how happy i am that we're having this conversation right now because it's something that Definitely. i'm personally going through and 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 that i'm 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 super grateful that you brought up um so i'm grateful for you man i just want to yeah. want to put it out there yeah i mean and like you said you know it's You know, people are going through different things in, at, at, in these times. You know, it's, it's, it's people still dealing with, you know, the pandemic. People still dealing with family and such. And I've had things that literally that I forgot about that literally came back in full, you know, right in front of me and really pan out and work out. So it's, it's you know, it's just you got to, you, you know, just step away from the ego and, 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 and it'll all work out, you know, and if it doesn't work out, you're like, Hey, maybe that wasn't the plan, you know, but um, yeah, but I feel like, you know, as long as you stay open to these things and then being able to shift or be adaptable is not as hard. Yeah. A hundred percent, man. Talking about shifting. Let's, I want I want to shift to something. Uh, what is, what is, what is, As an A and R, what does it mean that you do for Marmoset? I'm 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 still kind of uh, still getting trying to get to understand what what A and R really means these days. I mean, for us, I mean, we're basically we're the first line of communication always with our artists. If artists have any concerns with anything. If they have concerns with payment, if they have concerns with uh, uh, a license or, or or whatever, like we're the people they contact. They don't contact anyone else. Like they contact. Uh, it's kind of like we're the main switch. We're the main switchboard to the company. They come and contact us, and then if we think they need to to like we're going to help them with some finance work or something, I could contact the finance department or I could contact the tech, our tech team because something is happening with their dashboard and they can't see their placements on their dashboard. So we're like the first line of defense of everything dealing with, with Marmoset. We, we're the ones that help them get new music in our system. We're the ones that also helps them with like thinking of new things because a lot of times artists will contact us and say, hey, Farnell, You know, like what's happening in, in sync these days? Where do you think I can go? 
you know my music, you know my projects. How can I like maximize my, you know, wins and my return on investments and such? And we help them through that. We we give them, point them the right way because our job is to kind of know what's happening overall and in sync and and from you know from sports licensing to automotive to what's uh what is licensing for tv and film those are the things we pay attention to so then if i know a hip-hop artist who's trying to really land into the sports i'm like hey this is what you need to do you know uh right now cinematic the drama the brass you know those things go well in in sports you know like like work on that you know <laughs> and, uh, or i mean and then also we're also scouting and signing i'm also i'm always on a lookout and listening to artists and um composers and such just if i know we have a certain gap in our roster we had a big gap for salsa music in our roster and i was like hey let me call up my buddy you know uh uh uh, in Australia, who lives in Colombia, that has uh, a salsa band, and let me reach out to them and see if I could sign them and get twenty to thirty songs real fast from them. You know, like these are things we're constantly doing. We're kind of constantly keeping track of the trends in the industry, what's new, what's popping. You know, I might not listen to everything that's current, but I try to keep track of everything that's happening, even in tech and such. So I could be able to help, you know, my artists and also be able to help the company as far as like any directions they're trying to head to with AI or uh, uh, NFTs or, or whatever, just trying to be able to be helpful and such. But, you know, our job is, 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 is dealing with the artists. Yes, we deal with data and, and things like that. What's licensing? What's what are our clients asking for? Because we're we're kind of signing. Like what what is what are what are the references? What what are our clients asking for? What are the references they're coming to us with? Um, what do we have on a roster, and what do we need on a roster? By analyzing all of that, and also like a certain percentage being just like our gut feeling, what we feel that we need at the company so that we can get the best music to 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 fill the needs. Because the thing about it is we don't want to get uh, a ton of certain music that we know that's not going to walk out the door. Our goal, my goal is to get artists paid. <laughs> that's, and, and if my artists get paid, the company gets paid. So I don't want to sign artists um, who has music that we're not really looking for. You know, I want to make sure I'm targeting that because the worst feeling is having your music at a uh, a music library, production company, or music licensing company, and it's not doing anything. And I think that's a waste of time, a waste of energy. And it also makes you creep into that doubt thing, you know, like, hey, is my music not good enough? Like, no, it's not that it's not good enough. It's the fact that different companies specializes in different genres and type of music. Like there's production companies um, that just focus on cinematic epic trailer. And that's all they do all day. Amadea and all of these other companies, that's that's what they do. And then you got some other companies that's doing the pop. They're doing a the catchy thing. Uh, so it's like, you know, my goal is to like make sure I'm equipping our artists, getting dope artists, and and also just looking out for our company, you know. Yeah. Overall, I mean, and then I also do a lot of streaming and, and things like that because I we do work with certain artists and composers to create what we have artist collabs, so that we will we will work with someone, um, a composer, and we're like, hey, we want to make X amount of songs. And they will create a rough draft. We as a company will listen to it, give them critiques back and forth for you know X amount of time till we could get it to the point where we feel like that song is like is ready to go out the door. Like when when a, a creative director or a supervisor listen to it, they're gonna want it. Even if it's not for that project, they might remember it for their next project. So we're trying to 
piece music like that and, and create music like that and also help artists. So with that, I'm also dealing with streaming and releasing those songs into, um, you know, uh, DSPs and such. Mm. So what is your, uh, what do your contracts with artists look like these days in Marmoset? I mean, at Marmoset, we do 50-50 split. Um, like most music licensing companies. No, we do not own the, the we, we do not take the production, uh, the publishing. We're not taking the writers. You know, some of these production companies are not only taking publishing, but they're also trying to take everything else. And it's like, no, we, we're representing you to help, you know, get you the most out of your music. Mm -hmm. So if you got a placement for uh, a TV show, Say you got a license on uh, uh, She-Hawk. One of our artists did. And they say if they got $5,000. So they got $2,500. We got $2,500. Plus, on the broadcast, well, that's not a good example because that's Disney+. Plus. But if it was on TV, on primetime, they would get the broadcast royalties as well and such because they own both sides of their music. We don't want to take that because that's your work. You know, you did all the hard work. We did all the hard work as far as like our cultivating our relationships with the networks, supervisors, um, traveling to different cities, meeting these companies and, and agencies and such. So we were like, hey, we're going to do our job. You do your job. And we, we split everything 50-50. Right. That's sick. Um, <clears throat> yeah, because that's, sorry, <clears throat> that's not the... Um the library model for sure it's more the yeah. the agency one a second i need to drink some stuff yeah mm. well that's that's the great thing about so when i put out that call to get cinematic composers epic and trailer and such i one of the first things i said was like hey we're not like the production companies that take your publisher <laughs> we don't want your publisher and everybody's like Hey, sign us up. Yeah. Um, and some That's some the of them are yes, and some of them are so used to writing specifically only for briefs that they don't have like music just laying around. They're like, "Hey, what are the briefs? Are you going to send us briefs?" And I'm like, "No, we're not going to send you briefs, but yes, this is what kind of like what we're looking for." But we want you to make your music and and that you're passionate about and send it over to us. Word. Yeah, that's uh, I feel like that's the, the definitely the direction that I'm going to uh, going to as an artist, as somebody who <clears throat> who, who made a lot of music for um, for libraries. And that's, you know, like I have no regret and I still work with a bunch of libraries, but I feel like where the world is going for somebody like me is the ability to have leverage. And that's something that um, libraries take a lot of the times because they, I mean, even even some libraries, when they put their stuff on DSPs, they put it under their name. They don't even put your name yeah. on it. So it's like, know. yeah. It, it's, so it's it's kind of like this this thing, this, um, yeah, it was great to work on these tracks and I've, my level has improved, but like it, my name's not at the front of this. So like, what what are we doing like why why is this why is the um, the dynamic like that um and there's something that i feel like as an as an artist as somebody who wants to create leverage for themselves and wants to 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 have their own deal down the line this can hinder that in a way you know uh -huh. like not hinder but just not contribute to that and as you were saying like as solution-based individuals we want to look at uh, um at solutions for our where uh -huh. where we can shine and again some some people like i have friends homies that were on this podcast which are getting weekly trailer placements you know what i mean uh -huh. so like they're swimming in it they're 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 buying like they're i have friends who bought their houses from these things and things like that but i feel like for my own individual purposes, I feel like it's a bit different. And uh, so I'm happy that you're saying what you're saying. And, uh, and yeah, man, I'm, I'm super, super yeah. glad to hear that. Well, I mean, it's different for different companies and such too, you know, depending on the size of the company and, and things like that, because some of the companies formation sound works with the, the percentages are totally different and, and, and more favorable for the artists because, 
but at the same time, I just feel that you, you just got to kind of like shop and, and really look around and such. And because sometimes some people just get stuck in one model and they feel that if it's not different, if it is different, it's not good. And I'm like, you know, there's other people who's willing to give you upfront money and also your your royalties and things for your music instead of just taking all the money and you just get your music played on a show. And you and the thing about it with American PRO companies like BMI and and ASCAP, you don't know what you're going to get paid. It's like a it's guessing. Am I getting five bucks or 200 bucks for my song being on that show? You know, and, and it sucks and it's kind of weird. Um, but, you know, it's like we're all a lot of these people are just here because they love to make music and they love to create. And some of them put themselves through a lot of bad situations because they want to just be able to keep making good music. 100%. 100%, man. I, I want to... I want to keep uh, keep the the rest like another keep the conversation at this and do a do a round two down the line, perhaps in, per- in person. I don't know if you're coming for PMC, uh, but um, but um, is there any last piece of wisdom you'd like to leave our listeners with? Well, I definitely need to be at PMC because I'm trying to win another award this year as well. So, <laughs> <Let's go. laughs> um, you know, what? really, it's just like, I feel like just really being humbled, but being thirst, thirsty for knowledge. Like there's so much wealth out there. There's so many places like sync gems, sync bees, even Reed Stefan, the, the realest Muppet in the game. There's um, Lander. I go to Lander's, YouTube and there's various different personalities on YouTube who has tons of materials on how to get better in this industry, how to level up, how to email, how to compose, how to how to export your stems. Like you know, there's so Clint Music. Um, uh, you got Eric uh, Campbell. You got all of these different people who are out here, and it's just like being hungry, but not, you know, you have to, you got to be hungry for the knowledge and forever a student because I'm still learning. I feel like I've, I haven't, will never feel like I really made it because I'm still learning, still being humble and still easily would take the time to learn from someone um, as much as they will probably learn from me, you know? So it's just like the success is out there, but you have to, as they say, you know, uh, trust the process, you know, trust the process, you know, put your head down, study, create, study, fine tune, create, collab, you know, like all of those things. And you're going to find that success, but you have to be confident in your own skills and where you need to be at. Yeah. 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 Let's leave them yeah. with that, my man. Thank you Woo. so much for coming on. Uh, where can people find you? I'm I'm everywhere. Farnell Newton. I'm on you know all the social medias, and I respond to all of them, uh, f- especially LinkedIn and Instagram and Facebook, and and you could also just uh, yeah farnellnewton.com as well. Word. I'll leave all the links in the show notes, man. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Roy.